Hey everyone, welcome back to Six Sister Stuff. Today I'm sharing with you 10 of the best Instant Pot dinner recipes. So I'm Kristen, I am the second sister from Six Sister Stuff, and if you notice we share a lot of Instant Pot recipes, so today I decided to switch it up a little bit and I'm going to share with you our top 10 Instant Pot dinner recipes just to make your life a little bit easier. Before we get started, I'm curious what your favorite dinner recipe is to make an Instant Pot. So go ahead and put that down below in the comments. I would love to hear. But for now, we're just gonna jump in to my top 10. All right, should we jump into this Let's one? Let's do this. This is one of our favorites on oh our website. And we put it on the website not long ago and it exploded. Everyone so loved it. We're showing you just some simple ways to even make it easier than the recipe that's on the website. Exactly. So here's our shortcut. Let's do it. What are we starting with? All right, let's, I'm gonna have you cut up the chicken. Okay. So we're gonna have like one and a half pounds to two pounds yep. of chicken. chicken. And I like to use the tenderloins because it just makes them cook a little bit faster. And, and they're nice because they're small, so they're easy to cut up. And lots of times they've already been, um, the, like the fat's been, they're trimmed. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So a lot of times they're already trimmed, makes it really easy to cut it up. Awesome. I'm just cutting it into some kind of bite sized pieces. Oh, that's perfect, especially for kids. All right. Yeah. So she's cutting that. I'm going to push the saute button right here. So when you push the saute button, right now it says, there's a little button that says less, normal, or more. We're just going to keep it at normal because. It's fine. All right, so saute, then it's going to beep for you. After you push the saute button, it's gonna start heating up. Once it gets hot, I kind of just test it a little bit. Once it's hot, then I add my oil and other things. How long does it take to get hot? Sometimes like two minutes, sometimes like okay. five. Lots just of times, depends. even before it's hot, I'll just start cooking. Yeah. I'm in a hurry. Okay. It is what it is. Right, this is real life. Exactly. All right, so once it's heated up, we're just gonna add, what, about a tablespoon, two tablespoons yep. of olive oil. Yep. We're just gonna drizzle that into the top of the pot. Now I like when my oil gets hot, and then I do a trick and I lift my pot up, and just kind of wiggle my oil around so it covers all the bottom of my Instant Pot. Well, there you go. There you go. Kristen's kind of fancy. Instant pot tricks. <laughs> So I would call her the Instant Pot Master. There we go. Once the oil is heated up, ready to go, Camille is gonna add our chicken. Yep. You ready? Kristen gets scared to touch raw chicken, so that's <laughs> why I'm doing it. I appreciate that. If your oil's hot, it should sizzle at this point. Yes. Ours is still warming up, but that's okay. You can hear it a little bit. Now, this makes a lot of rice <laughs> and other things, so this is a lot of chicken. If you have yeah. a smaller family, you could even cut this recipe in half or even in fourths. Totally. I mean, you just make sure you cut all the ingredients down, but the timing will be the same. You cook over the same amount. All right, so once the chicken starts to cook on the bottom, you kind of just flip it around a little bit. I kind of stir as I go. Is that horrible? No, I, that's what I do too, just to make sure that it all gets evenly cooked. I'm gonna throw the onion in there too. Please do. Just to add some more flavor. Let that cook in the oil. Nice. I think that's one of my favorite smells is cooking chicken and onions together. Well, let's make it even better and add some garlic. All right, how much garlic are we gonna add? I think just a teaspoon. Or what, too close? Sorry, I'm just grabbing a spoon. No, it's fine. Yeah, too close. That sounds good. So we're just using jarred garlic. Um, a half teaspoon of this equals a clove. This is one of my favorite shortcuts. Oh. So you don't have to chop fresh garlic. I think all six of us I know. use that shortcut. We love it. I don't like pressing my garlic. Yep. Okay, so the seasonings we're gonna add, I'm just doing like a teaspoon of salt and a teaspoon of pepper. You can totally eyeball this. Don't feel like you need to measure it out. I think a Rachel Ray style, pour it in your hand and then dump it in. <laughs> We're not fancy like that. Yep. If uh, you want to add other seasonings that you like, you could. You could do some Italian seasoning. You yeah. could do a little bit more like garlic powder if you love the taste of garlic. I mean, however you like to season it. You can add a little more. It totally works. We love like a little bit more salt, so mm -hmm. I usually add about a tablespoon of salt into this recipe. You Just, do? I do. I love salty things. Mm. I didn't know that about you. Yep. Learn something new every day. Yep. All right, so once the chicken kind of has some browning around the edges, I right. mean, you can cook this as much or as little as you want. It just really is to seal in the flavor, kind of make the chicken have some added moisture, I yeah, would say. Yeah, and I think a little bit of flavor, too, it gives yep. it some saute. 100%. So now, from this point, it's just kind of a dump and go. Right. So we're adding in two cups of rice. Now, in the recipe, 
it says it a little bit differently, but yeah, we're yeah. showing you this is the simple way to make a dump and go. It's like the dump and go yep. version. Totally. Yep. All right. So I'm doing two cups of white rice. If you want to, you can rinse the rice before you dump it in. Totally up to you. Yeah, but I'm just going to go ahead. We don't judge you either way if you rinse your rice or not. Do your There's own no thing. judging. Okay, and then I'm going to do about two cups of chicken broth. Nice. Just kind of pour that right in. There we go. All right, so the secret when you're cooking you're doing rice in the Instant Pot is you want to make sure that the rice, every single kernel of rice touches the liquid, because if it doesn't, you're going to have some hard pieces of rice there. So hmm. that's what we're going to do. Didn't know that. Now you know. Okay, I've got half a cup of water going in too. Mm -hmm. Just some added moisture for that rice. Now I've got a can of cream of chicken soup. If you want to, if you're feeling super domestic, you can make your own. But for simplicity, I just use a can of this. You can get, um, they make a healthier option. Reduced fat. Yeah, kind. reduced fat, which works great. It's not coming out. There we go. Okay. So add that in there. And then the last thing we are gonna throw in is a bag of frozen vegetables. And they are still frozen. They are. So. Which I think works better because you're gonna cook all the vegetables, rice and chicken all at the same time. Yep. So I think frozen vegetables works better because then they'll cook. Yeah, they won't be super they mushy. They won't be soggy. Yep. So all right, dump, just dump in. it in. Yep. Give it a good mix. I'm just gonna mix it around, make sure all the rice is covered by the liquid. We're good to go. Good to go. So we have our lid now. We're all ready to go. Now remember, while we are putting this together, it's still on saute, which is okay. So I should put the lid on correctly, huh? Okay, so we're putting the lid on. We're gonna turn this little knob to sealing, not venting. Make sure I can see this here. Now, because it is on saute, first you have to push cancel. So you're gonna push the keep warm cancel button just to turn it all the way off. Then you're gonna push the manual button. Now, if you don't have a manual button, you'll have a pressure cook button. It's the same thing, manual, pressure cook, you're good. All right, so then we're gonna go up to six minutes. Now we can do six minutes because our chicken is little. It's already been sauteed. The rice only takes about six to seven-ish minutes to cook, and the vegetables only take about two minutes to cook, but they still taste good together. Yeah. So it's all kind of the same amount of time. That's why we can all cook it together. Awesome. All right, so you heard it little beep. Once it says on, you can just walk, walk away. away. So it's all done cooking. We cooked it for about six minutes. You can go up to seven if you want, but because it's done, we're gonna turn it over to a quick release. Here we go. <laughs> Once all the pressure's out, then you can open the lid. Just beware of the steam, because it gets toasty. All right, so you can see this. Now it looks like there's a lot of liquid on top, but once you mix it around, there's some rice that still needs a little bit of liquid and it will all work out together. Yeah, it all evens out. Exactly. So while you're doing that, you want me to dump the cheese in? Yeah. So you're gonna add, is it one cup? Yeah, one cup of cheddar cheese. One cup cheese. of shredded cheddar cheese. You can shred your own if you want, or you can buy pre-shredded, shredded. Doesn't really matter. We always tend to buy the shredded because it just makes it's life yep. easy. But I did totally. I did notice if you buy the block cheese and shred it yourself, mm -hmm. it melts a little bit easier. So much easier, mm -hmm. especially in this recipe. But yeah. either way, you're gonna be just exactly. If you want more cheese, you can make it more cheesy, feel free to add more. That's what we did too. So after we did individual servings, we put a little more cheese on. On each one? Yep. It's a great idea. Yeah. Let the kids. This is super kid friendly. My kids love this. Mine too. And like you said, it makes a ton. Like we ate it for lunches all week long. Right? This We're going on third meal of this. I mean, it's just the sweet. It's awesome. I know. It's one of our favorites now. All right. Okay. What do you think? Looking good? Looks good. Okay, should we plate it up? Yep. So at this point, you could feed it to your family. It is going to be super hot for a minute, but mm. it's delicious. It's cheesy. It's comfort food. I don't think you could ask for anything. So today we're going to make instant pot turkey breast. And growing up, we always had turkey for Thanksgiving, and it's such a huge undertaking that this is the perfect recipe to feed a smaller crowd. Yes, yes. A couple of people, so you're not making this massive turkey that you're gonna have tons and tons of leftovers in your Instant Pot. Exactly, and I love cooking in the Instant Pot because it makes it just nice and juicy and tender. You know, sometimes you cook it in the oven and it gets a little like nasty. Like Christmas vacation right? when they're like sawing it open. <laughs> 
Exactly, so we're gonna show you how to make a nice, tender Instant Pot turkey breast. Let's get started. So you can do a few things with this. So you can um, saute your turkey breast, but we're not gonna do that today. So the only thing about the Instant Pot is that you don't get that nice brown crispness to your turkey. Does that mm -hmm. make sense? So you can saute your turkey, but for us, we're just feeding our family, so yeah. I really don't care about the, the crispiness of the skin. Yeah. So we're just gonna put it right in My the My kids pot. are weird about stuff looking burned, so if it's <laughs> seared on the outside, they're like, why is it black? Why is it burned? So we're just going the juicy route. Perfect, let's do it. Okay, so we're gonna make a seasoning mixture to go on our turkey breast, and I'm starting with a tablespoon of olive oil. Now we do the olive oil so it will make the spices stick to the turkey. Okay. And then, Kristen oh my introduced gosh. me to these. I love these things. They're the magnetic ones. If you haven't seen them, I'll, I'll link them down below for you guys. And then we're just doing a tablespoon of smoked paprika. Now if you don't have smoked paprika, you can just use the normal paprika. And then we've got, sorry, butterfingers here, two teaspoons of ground black pepper, and then a teaspoon of salt. And if you don't want all these spices, you can kind of make your own turkey. Yeah, you could well, substitute. Well, if you're worried about the paprika, you could always switch that out for thyme or something savory. Perfect. Um, a table, oh sorry, teaspoon of Italian seasoning. Nice. I always like to add a little bit more of Italian seasoning. Okay, should I open yeah, this? Yeah, <laughs> We're going for it today. Oh, yeah. the dump it. Oh, there you go. Let's do two teaspoons of Italian seasoning. Yeah. And then a teaspoon of minced garlic. Now, if you don't have the minced garlic, I like to use that kind because you can just keep it in your refrigerator and you always have garlic on hand, so you don't have to use the press every time, you know? Yes. All right, so we're just mixing this up. Oh, it smells so good. It smells like Thanksgiving. Yeah. Okay, are you ready? So, how I did this before, I will be the one touching the turkey, sorry. Hey, I'll, that's fine buddy. <laughs> Okay. So now this turkey breast comes with strings attached. Now you can keep it like that and just do the seasoning around that. But I like to season all the pieces of the turkey breast. So we cut it open and we're just gonna season um, on both sides. Just lightly rub around all the turkey. Go for it. Really getting in there. Mm -hmm. My first year of marriage, I thought I was gonna impress my husband and make a full size turkey. He got one through his work. Oh no. And it fell on the ground, it slipped out of my hands, and like the, all the stuff, like gizzards or whatever you deal with, yeah, yeah. It's like I'm never doing this again. And I ended up crying, and we went and got a hamburger. So, happy Thanksgiving. This is our kind of turkey. No bones, nothing. Right. None of the, the lovely stuff. Right. The and it's not gonna cook gizzards. for like, hours and hours and hours. No, so actually how the turkey cooks is, we usually say about six to eight minutes per pound. So this is three pounds. So I like to go more on the the longer side. So we're gonna do 24 minutes just with this. So we're actually gonna just stick it right into the bottom of the Instant Pot. So if you were searing the outside of this, would you sear it before you did the so you would spices. add a little bit more oil on the bottom and sear it with the spices. Okay. But because we're not, we're just gonna go this. Okay, so once we have the turkey in the bottom, and you always wanna make sure when you're cooking meat in the Instant Pot, the meat goes on the bottom because okay. it will cook better that way. So we're gonna just add about a half a cup to a cup. I like to add a cup just in case. We just want it to pressurize She's all the She's pouring it really carefully so the seasoning's I, I not I want my seasoning to still stay on my turkey. But the good thing is with the Instant Pot, because it pressurizes all the water and seasonings will kind of all mix together while it's cooking. So it will still taste good. All right, I think we're ready. So we're gonna put the lid on. Flip this around a little bit. Now this is, so this is the Instant Pot Lux. So the knob's a little bit different. So we're gonna turn this little knob to ceiling. And then it says it has a manual button. So the manual button and the pressure cook button are the same thing. So you wanna push your manual button, then you're gonna push your plus button. So we're going up to about 24 or 25 minutes, and we're gonna let it sit there. So you're gonna wait just a few seconds, and then, so after a few seconds, it's gonna beep and say on. That means you're doing it right. So now, you just get to walk away while your turkey cooks. Okay, so we have been letting this release on its own for about 15 minutes, and then we're gonna turn the little knob to venting to get out the rest of the pressure. Huh? We're good. <laughs> Love when that happens. Okay, then we're gonna just pull it right up. Oh my word, can you guys see this? Oh yeah. It looks so good. It, it smells, smells good. so good. 
Okay, so the secret of making turkey breast is that once it's done cooking, you're gonna put it on a plate, then you're gonna let it rest for about 10, 15 minutes with some foil over top. So that's what we're gonna do. Pull this out very gently. Oh, can you guys see that? Oh yeah. There you go. Oh, you got some foil. I feel bad saying this, but I've never been a turkey person. Like Thanksgiving turkey? This might change your mind. I know, but this has got me convinced, like it's <laughs> falling apart. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, so go ahead and put the foil on. We're gonna let it sit there for like 10, 15 minutes. Okay, so we're gonna let this sit there for like 10, 15 minutes. Okay, all right, I think we're ready. Okay. Oh man, that looks so good. Okay, so usually we'll have this all nice and plattered and <laughs> cut pretty, but I just wanna show you the inside of it here, of just how juicy and good it is. So if you're cooking this for Thanksgiving dinner, don't forget your mashed potatoes and other Thanksgiving recipes. I'll have a link down below in the description for you for other delicious Thanksgiving recipes here on YouTube. Okay, so we're first going to cook sausage and onions and mushrooms. mushrooms all together in the Instant Pot. So we're gonna first push the saute button and kind of let that heat up for a little okay, bit before cool. we throw everything in. So I'm gonna start mixing the cheeses. This is a big tub of ricotta cheese. Yes. Going full scent <laughs> with all of that. And then I'm gonna add in about 16 ounces of cottage cheese. You can go full fat, you can do low fat, just, I mean, whatever you want. Ricotta comes in whole milk or skim milk. If you want it super creamy, go whole. If you want to lighten it up a little bit, go skim. They both taste good. I know. I like do. both of them. They do. Oh, and then I'm going to also add two eggs to this. Okay. All right, so this is all heated up, ready to go. Okay. So I put in my cool. sausage first. I don't have to add oil because of, you know, the sausage yeah. is not going to stick. So I have my lovely chopster. Chopster. Favorite, I love favorite chopster. thing ever. I'm just gonna cook on me. A lot of times too to this cheese mixture, I'll add in like some garlic powder or Italian seasoning just to kind of give, give this it. cheesy layer um, a little boost of flavor, but it's fine without it too. Nice. Okay, so you're mixing all the cheeses. Mm -hmm. I'm mixing the sausage. Would you pass me the yep. onions? So we chopped an onion. Stick that in there. So a whole onion. Yep. Nice. And then there's a mushroom. Okay, so like it's done. Good. Yeah. Yep. This is pretty good. I'm gonna just add my mushrooms for just like a minute or so. Ooh. Mix it in there. Whoops! It's flying. Now, if you don't like mushrooms, you don't have to add mushrooms to this. But I love mushrooms. <laughs> I do too. Yeah. Okay. Looking good and smelling good. Okay. Uh -huh. You ready? Let's, yep. Let's layer it so up. So layer it up. So, okay. So we're gonna start in the pot with some sauce on the bottom. Nice. Just gonna dump a little bit in there. Spread it around. Yep. Just getting it all the way to the edges. You can use any kind of sauce that you have, whatever your favorite is. Okay, and then we gotta use some noodles, right? And they have to be oven ready. They have to be oven ready for this recipe. You're right. Yep. Okay, so this is a circle pot, obviously. <laughs> yeah. You're just gonna have to make it fit. Just kind of break your noodles so that they fit, right? Yeah, yeah, and it's, it's not gonna be pretty, but no one will see that you know, oh, there's a little bit of a noodle missing there. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Just as long so, as you get yeah, these little most pieces of it covered. are perfect because they just cover the parts that need to be covered. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, cool. All okay. right. We have noodles down. Noodles down. Cheese next. Okay. So, how many layers are we going to be doing? So, we're going to do as many layers as we can. We'll probably we'll we'll see what we can. We'll fit. see how many we get in there as full as we can. Yep. That's for sure. I love cheese, so I'm going heavy on it. And it's a little bit different. Like nine by thirteen, you have a very flat lasagna. This is going to be a tall lasagna. I love it. Which is perfect. Okay, so we got cheese all the way to the edges. Good. Add some meat now. Meat, onion, and mushrooms. Oh man, even pulling up, I still am all over the place. <laughs> What do you think of that? We're okay? Yep. Looks good. Okay. You could do a little bit more even if you want. Okay. There. Now 
more saka. I like the meat. I like it meaty. Me too. Okay, um, cheese, do we do like mozzarella and parmesan? Yeah, throw that on. Okay. Because let's be honest, lasagna has to be cheesy. Oops. Everyone Threw likes that bag. cheese. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay, so we just did some mozzarella and parmesan, and then we start again. Okay. So, let's go with the sauce. And it's not going to be pretty as you're spreading it around, but that's okay. No well, lasagna is. Yeah. Really? It all comes together. Exactly. So try and get it to the edges. Got that. And we'll go okay. with the grab noodles. One of those. I'll grab one too. Yep. Chop it up. You do the big one in the middle. Okay. Oh, I messed up. I'll it. hit the sides. Now, if only you could just come to my house all the time and we could cook Right? Together. This we is just way faster. Cruise through. No. <laughs> Lasagnas to me are really labor intensive, but I love that you can cook it all in there, like saute it, and then you can layer it in this other pot. Yeah, it's genius. Okay. I think this is the hardest part for me is putting the cheese on after you put the noodles on. Right, because it just, those noodles move. Yes. I know, but it's not bad. Okay. Ready? Ready for yep. the meat. Go more meat. And I'll add more cheese. Awesome. Can you go all the way to the top? Like, yes, this one you can. Uh huh. Some, I'm sure, it kind of overflows. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it really depends on what you have. Just because the okay. noodles are not going to expand that much, okay. um, that everything will kind of cook and then shrink a little bit. So yeah. Go oh, that's true. All I didn't the way, think about all that. All the way to the top. Here. Okay. Cool. Okay, more cheese, and then we'll go again. I think just one more layer here, right? Yeah, I yeah. think just one more. I'm sure we get plenty of sauce. Maybe a little bit more. It's a hefty little lasagna. Yes, it is. It like, is like you said, solid. it is. It's gonna be really tall. Yeah. So I mean, you don't have to. Your normal size of lasagna is like a normal square, but this one you want smaller because there's yeah. so many layers that you're gonna take digging into. So. Totally. Okay, so we're just gonna finish out all the sauce. Just kind of pull it up a little. Oh, yeah. So it doesn't get covered. Yeah. You can rest it on top of the right. And then we're gonna finish off with just a hefty layer of cheese. Nice. Because the cheesy lasagna I like it. is where it's at. Exactly. Okay, so while you're putting cheese, I'm gonna rinse this out real quick. Okay. So then we're gonna cook it right inside of this pot that's already dirty. So you don't have to clean it, right? it. we're just rinsing it out. We need to put something on it so it can keep as much water out as we possibly can. So we're gonna mm -hmm. do it really tight with some foil. Cool. Now the handle is still in there, but that's okay. Okay. We'll, when it's done, we'll pull the foil off and then pull the handle out. Okay, cool. Because getting in is a lot easier than getting it out. Yeah. Okay, so then on the bottom of the pot, we're just gonna add like a cup of water just so it can pressurize. We're just gonna stick our pot right down inside. So you don't even need the trivet or anything. Mm -hmm. You just put it right in right the water. In. Oopa. And it fits pretty tight in there. Yes. But like still in the room, you can slide it around. Yeah, you can, it can slide around. Definitely. Cool. And you can have all the water will come up on the sides and still cook it, so. All right. So crazy. Ready? Yeah. Okay. So, close the lid. Make sure that your little knob is turned to ceiling, not venting. <laughs> I've, I've done that, it's yep. fine. Yep. <laughs> we all have, we all have. All right, then we're gonna push the manual or the pressure cook button, whatever instant pot you have. And we're gonna go up to, what'd you say? 24. 24? 24 minutes. 24. Okay, then once you set the pot, you're gonna wait just a few seconds for it to say on. There we go. And then that means you did it right. So awesome. Walk, Walk away. away. <laughs> All right, guys, we'll see you in a little bit. All right. It's done. It's so done. it's when it's done cooking, you'll see that little L and then it will start counting up. So we're at two minutes. Now, lots of people are really funny about, you know, quick release or natural release. We're just going to do quick release because that's just that's all we have time that's for. That's what I do. Exactly. Here we go. Okay. All steamed out. Good to go. Let's open it up. Open it up. Let's see what this looks like. Oh, uh, you see the foil first. Okay, so I, I like to take a glove and we'll just pull the foil off. Okay. Nice. Now, you gotta realize.
realize it is cooked with water, so it's not the same texture as your okay. oven. But no. with this pot in pot, you can stick it right inside your oven and broil it for a few minutes to brown up that cheese. Okay, you gotta get the little handle out. There we go. We're just gonna pull right out. Cool. Oh, it is heavy. Oh my goodness. Now, this is covered with some food, so we're gonna put it like in, you can put it on a cookie sheet or a pan or something like that, but just so you don't want the bottom of your oven all gross. Yeah. So. All right, you wanna oh, stick that yes. in? So we're just going in the broiler just to kind of brown up the top. Yep. Will you open it for me? Yep. All right, so here it is, completely done. Still a little bit liquidy. I would let it set up for at least a few minutes before you serve it. Um, but yeah. And with we're making macaroni and cheese, a creamy macaroni and cheese. So we're gonna start with one pound of elbow macaroni. Then we're gonna do four cups of chicken broth. Now I love to get these containers because I know that there are four cups in here and I don't have to measure anything. So we're gonna pour it all in. Okay, now the secret when making pasta is that you wanna make sure, yes I am using my finger, you wanna make sure that all the noodles are covered in liquid. If you don't have enough liquid, then you need to add more liquid to it. You just wanna make sure all the noodles are covered or you're gonna have some hard noodles with your pasta. All right, this is all that we have to do. We're gonna put the lid on now. Okay, we're putting the lid on. Can you hear that? That means you're doing it right. Then you're gonna turn this little knob to ceiling. Now, the other Instant Pots have a different looking knob. They both have ceiling and venting, so make sure that it's on ceiling. Okay, once it's on ceiling, then we're gonna come up over here and we're gonna push the manual button or the pressure cook button and we're gonna go down to just four minutes. Pasta only takes four minutes to cook. So once you push the buttons, then you're gonna wait for it to say on. Once it says on, you're good to go. Now, the difference between making, like let's say macaroni and cheese in the Instant Pot compared to on your stove top is that you literally can set your timer to four minutes and walk away. Now you think of all the steps you have to do when you do it on the stove top. You have to heat your water, you have to make sure it doesn't boil over, then you have to put your noodles in, you have to wait about seven minutes for your noodles to cook, and you are just at the stove top the whole entire time. With the Instant Pot, I can go clean up the kitchen, I can go put away the laundry, I can do a lot of other things while it's cooking. So this is why I love the Instant Pot so much. All right, we're gonna let this cook, and then I'll come back and I'll finish making the rest of macaroni and cheese. So once it's all done cooking, you're gonna have it say L. L means that it is done. You'll usually hear a little sound that it is done, it beeps at you, and then it's gonna start counting up. So you'll know how many minutes it's been done. So usually with pasta and other things, I like to do something called a quick release. A quick release is when you turn it to venting right when it's done cooking. Now, if you see some instructions that say natural release, that means you're just gonna leave it just as it is and let it release the pressure on its own, natural release. But with pasta, and because I wanna make this really quick, we're gonna turn it to quick release, which is turning it to venting so all the steam will come out. Okay, so once that's all done, there's a little pin that will drop. That means that you can open your lid safely. Oh, and if you can see, the pasta is cooked perfectly. Now there is a little bit liquid at the bottom, and that is just fine because we're gonna use that liquid for the macaroni and cheese. So just kind of mix your noodles around a little bit. They might be a little bit stuck together, but that's not hard. Once you start mixing, they'll come apart. Okay. So now we're gonna push the saute button. The saute button is the other button that I use all the time. So you can brown your onions or you can brown your meat, stuff like that. But we're gonna use the saute button today to make everything warm. So first we're gonna push the cancel and then we're gonna push the saute button. There you go. Okay, now it's time to add the good stuff, the mac and cheese. So we're first gonna add a half a cup of milk. And I'm just gonna eyeball this a little bit. And then about a teaspoon of Dijon mustard. You don't have to add the Dijon, I just like, it just gives it a little bit of a kick. 
and then just a dash of hot sauce. You can use your favorite hot sauce, whatever hot sauce you like. Or if you don't like hot sauce, you don't even have to add the hot sauce. I just like the extra flavor that it gives it. And then last, we're gonna add just two tablespoons of butter. So I'm just gonna mix these things in there right now. So we're gonna let the butter melt and mix in the mustard and everything else. It's starting to smell good. All right, so once the butter is all melted, now we're just gonna add two cups of cheddar cheese. I like to use sharp cheddar cheese, but you can use any kind of cheddar cheese that you want. Now, if you shred your own cheddar cheese, that will make it mix a little bit easier, but I'm kind of lazy and I like to buy pre-shredded, so I don't even have to worry about that stuff. I'm a more of dump everything in and go kind of person. All right, once your cheese is melted and everything is melted and mixed together, go ahead and push the cancel button. You don't wanna keep sauteing or it will burn the bottom of your pan, it will burn the noodles. So we're turning it off. And so you'll just have nice, hot mac and cheese ready to serve. Now, if you wanna make this a little bit earlier in the day, you can always push um, the cancel button again. It is also the keep warm button and you can just let it sit here for an hour or two. I would put the lid back on and let it sit until you're ready to eat. All right, oh man, these noodles smell so good. I can smell just a little bit of Dijon mustard in there. It's my favorite. Now, I was thinking that you could easily do, if you have the other box mac and cheese, you could easily make just the Kraft macaroni and cheese too because it's literally the same thing. You're just cooking your noodles and adding everything else when you're done. So I'm not gonna touch the chicken, we're just gonna dump it in. <laughs> That's what I love about using frozen chicken. You don't have to touch it. Dump Throw and go. In. Yep. So we have we have four chicken breasts in there, but you can have three if you yeah. want to. So, yep. all right. Next, you want to add garlic in for me. Yep. So we've got like two cloves of garlic, so about a teaspoon. Nice. That. Okay. And then cumin, cumin. However you want to say it. <laughs> uh, we got two tablespoons of this, and I love this and chili powder together. Is like two of my most favorite things. It's perfect for Mexican recipe. Best way to get it. A little more. Here we go. Here we go. There we go. All right. Okay. So do that and then do it to the batter. You want to do it? Yep. Oh, that's a little easier to pull out. Yeah, this one isn't so packed. Uh -huh. Whoops, that one might have a little bit extra. Pull the spice. It's gonna have a kick. Mm. Okay, so next we're gonna add a half a cup of brown rice. Okay. So we're gonna actually put it kind of in the bottom so it will be covered with the liquid. All right. Could you use a different kind of rice if you want? You could, you could. Okay. It will cook a little bit longer because brown rice takes about 25 minutes to cook and that's how long we're gonna be cooking this for. Okay. So, yeah. All right, well I'm gonna dump in a can of black beans. They've already been rinsed and drained. So, there's that, that's loud. Nice, you wanna do the tomatoes too? Yep. So this is just a can of diced tomatoes. Dump that right on top. And then about a cup and a half of chicken broth. I'm just going to eyeball it, not quite half, but Okay, cool. All right, so lid can go on. Lid is on. All right. Now, the thing about this recipe is that it's the burrito bowls, chicken burrito bowls, and so after this cooks, that's all the good stuff happens after it's cooked. Okay. Okay. Are you ready? Yep. So this is a different kind of Instant Pot that we're using. It's We're going to make sure this little knob is turned to ceiling. Yep. Go ahead and push the manual button or the pressure cook button, whatever your Instant Pot has. And then because it's frozen, we're gonna go up to 25 minutes. There we go. And after a few seconds, it will say on. That means you did it right and you can just walk away. All right, when this is done, we'll come back. Okay, so our chicken is done in the Instant Pot. We already vented it. We already let the spray fly. No, it really wasn't bad. It was just steamy. Okay. All right. So now, shred the chicken. Okay. I'm gonna give you I'll that pull job. this out. Okay. Oh, there we go. So this chicken, you really could use it for so many different things, right? Right. Any Mexican right. tacos, burritos, uh, nachos, like whatever you feel like. Exactly. But what are we doing with this? We're doing today? a little bit healthier today, so we're gonna put it on some lettuce or salads, okay. whatever you want. I like it actually on spinach is my favorite, but Ooh. we're gonna use like the romaine today. So. Perfect. 
Awesome. So once you shred the chicken, then you're going to throw it back in there and get all the flavors and yeah, stuff on it. Yeah, because this is pieces. really good. Yeah. And Juice. there's and the rice is in there. Rice and beans okay. and all the good stuff. I'll hurry and finish shredding this up. All right. Chicken is all shredded. Now it's for the good stuff. Okay, I'm going to use the slotted spoon. Okay. Is that okay? Oh, yeah. Just sure. get some beans, get some chicken and rice. All the good stuff. Sometimes when we make this, I would make salads for my husband and I. Uh -huh. So the kids will make like quesadillas oh, with it. Oh, that's for, a good like, idea. Wrapping in a tortilla because that's so much easier for them to eat. All right. Yep. Okay, so now we just add the good stuff. All your favorite yep. toppings. Okay. And you can add whatever you want. So what? sour cream. The paper salad. We're gonna make this look pretty. Yeah. Maybe a little bit of tomatoes. A little bit of cheese. cheese. Yes, I can do cheese. Okay. You can use your fork to get out some salsa. Go for it. Okay. My husband likes to put jalapenos on it just Ooh. for like an added kick. I would love that. So that's a good addition. And I love like the guacamole stuff. Oh yeah, guacamole. Mm -hmm. um, corn. I love corn. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I love it. All right, guys. Super simple, easy, healthy. I mean, if you even take out the sour cream, it's still super healthy. So. Okay, so don't be intimidated by all the ingredients you see. This recipe actually comes together really quickly and it is delicious, so stick with me here. Okay, we're gonna start with our Instant Pot and we're gonna push the saute button. Good, so it's gonna take about a minute or two to heat up and get hot. So while it's heating, we're gonna throw in our stuff. So we're gonna put in one tablespoon of butter, and then one teaspoon of olive oil. You just eyeball that. All right, then we're just gonna wait for these, for the butter to melt and for the oil to get hot. While we're waiting for this to get hot, I'm gonna just go ahead and chop up my chickens. I have two large chicken breasts. You can do anywhere from one to two, um, but I like chicken in my chicken and dumplings, so we're gonna go with two. Now I'm cutting these into bite-sized pieces just because you don't want a big chunk of chicken. It's better to have small pieces. So cut up all my chicken, we're good to go. And so our oil and butter are all ready to go too. Okay, so right now I chopped up an onion and then about three stalks of celery. So I'm just gonna take this and just put it right into the pot. Okay, and you're just gonna stir that around a little bit. So you just want these cooked until the onion is fragrant and the celery is cooked just a little bit through. Mm, I love the smell of onion. Cooked onion is my favorite. Okay, so next we're gonna add a few more vegetables. Now it calls for one cup of carrots. And so you can have whole carrots and chop them up small, but I'm gonna cheat today and just use just baby carrots and throw in about a cup or so. And then it also calls for one potato, but I love using the mini baby potatoes because you can just throw them in there like that or you can cut them in half and it just makes it really quick and easy. So I don't know, I do about 10 potatoes or so and just throw them in. You just want them so they're bite-sized. So if they are too big, you want to cut them, but if they're pretty small, then you'd be fine just to throw in the whole potato. And if you don't want to use the baby ones, you can just use just a normal russet potato or a few red potatoes, just cut them up and throw them in. So once our potatoes are in, I'm just going to stir it around a little bit. Okay, so then I'm gonna add just a little bit of garlic. Um, I like to use the canned garlic, but you can use whatever garlic you want. So I did about a half teaspoon or so of garlic. Mix that in too. And then it's time to start cooking everything. So we're gonna put our chicken in right now. Dump that in. And then we're gonna add two cups of chicken broth because you're gonna need liquid in order for your Instant Pot to pressurize. It's kinda 
eyeball it there. I like to use these containers because I know there's four cups in there, so I use about half of it or so. You don't have to be exact with this recipe. All right, that is looking good. Okay, so then we're gonna just add a little bit of seasoning. So just salt and pepper, just however much you want. I did about a half teaspoon of each. And then we have about a half teaspoon of poultry seasoning that you can put in there. And then about a half teaspoon of sage. If you want to put other spices in here, go ahead and do that because I love spices, but these together are some of my most favorites. All right. Mix it all around a little bit and we're ready to cook. So because it's on saute right now, we want to push the cancel button first. So we're going to push cancel and then put our lid on. Make sure that your little knob is turned to ceiling, not venting. Then you're gonna push either the pressure cook button or the manual button. Now because our chicken is cut up, we don't have to cook it as long. So I'm gonna cook it for about 15 minutes. Okay, now while this is cooking and pressurizing, I'm gonna go ahead and take my biscuits and start cutting those up. So. I already popped it so you wouldn't have to see my face as it exploded. But so this is the jumbo biscuits. It comes with eight, but you only need about six of them. So I'm going to take a biscuit and then pull it out carefully and just kind of flatten it out a little bit. Now you want to do it into strips. So I'd like to do it into six pieces. So I split it in two first and then just two more. They don't have to be even. It's fine because once they cook, they'll all look the same anyway. So. So you're gonna do this to six of your biscuits and then just set them to the side. They can sit there while the rest of your food will cook. So we've chopped up our chicken, we put in our vegetables, we put in our spices, and we just chopped up all the dumplings and you're gonna put in the dumplings in your pot right now. All right, so we're gonna add two more cups of chicken broth. So we're gonna have four cups total in there. So, And then we're just going to carefully place your biscuits on top. Now there's going to be a lot of liquid in there. You just kind of want to place them right on top of the liquid and spread them out because if they're all mushed together it's not going to cook very well. So you want individual biscuits and so you're just going to spread them out the best you can. So once all your biscuits are in, carefully take out your spoon. So you're not going to mix it or anything. You're going to leave your biscuits right there floating on top. So before you put your lid on make sure that you push the cancel button. Then you can put your lid on. Okay. Lid goes on. Make sure this little knob is turned to ceiling, not venting. Then you're gonna push the pressure cook or manual button. And we're gonna go to 10 minutes. Um, your chicken is cut up so small that it will only take about 10 minutes to cook and your biscuits will cook in about 10 minutes too. So we're gonna let that cook and then we'll come back. All right, so it's all done cooking. Um, you can see that the little L is starting to count up. That means that it's done. So you can either let it release on its own for a little while, or you can turn the knob to venting. And I'm gonna turn it to venting today. Okay, so once all the pressure's out, that little button will go down, and then you can take the lid off safely. All right, oh, you can see the biscuits, they look good. Now they look obviously a little soggy because they're sitting in liquid, but they are cooked all the way through. So we're just gonna mix them around just a little bit. You don't wanna mix too much because then you'll break up the biscuit. It'll make your chicken and dumplings thick, but you wanna keep your biscuits whole. So we're just mixing carefully. All right, once we've mixed, we're gonna add a half a cup of heavy cream. And then we're gonna add about a cup of peas. Now you could other, add other vegetables if you want, but I just like peas and my chicken and dumplings. So about a cup or so. There we go. Then you're just gonna carefully mix everything in. Now you can cook your food just like this, or you can make it go a little bit faster. Push the cancel button and push saute, and then you'll cook your vegetables just a little bit faster, or, or your peas, peas a little bit faster. It will just make everything heat up quicker. Looks good. So we're just gonna let this sit for a minute or two, let it saute and just keep stirring um, so it will cook nice and even. 
All right, so when it's all done, I like to serve it in a bowl because it's, it's almost like a soup, but you know, it's chicken and dumplings. It's so good. All right, you can see that. Oh, it smells so good. So this recipe is super simple and super basic and it, it tastes amazing. My husband couldn't believe how good it actually tasted. So let's get into it. So usually you take your corned beef, you have about two to four pounds. I usually like to do two pounds because that feeds my family sick easily. So, but this one is four pounds, which is fine. We're just gonna cook it all in the Instant Pot. So, I'm gonna put it in and because it is so big, we're just gonna stick it right on top of each other. Now, you can get corned beef at like Kroger. We got this one at, at Smith's or Kroger. Um, I've also found it at Costco and sometimes at Walmart around St. Patrick's Day. All right, so once corned beef's in, now we're gonna put in about a cup of carrots. You can use chopped carrots or you can just use the baby carrots if you'd like. Um, next, we're gonna do an onion. So I just cut it into four chunks, just making it easy. It's more for like seasoning than anything else. Then we have about a fourth cup of parsley that I chopped up. So we'll just put that right on top. Now, usually corned beef comes with some seasoning and it's my favorite. So I always put in the little package of seasoning that comes with it and just sprinkle it over everything. Then on top, we're gonna just do two bay leaves. Now, if you put these in, remember to take them out when you're food cooking. Okay, now we're just gonna add about three cups of liquid at the bottom of the pot. And that's really how easy it is. So we're gonna put a lid on. I'm gonna put the lid on. Make sure this little knob is on sealing, not venting. So then you're gonna push the pressure cook button, or if you have a different Instant Pot, it could be manual also. Then we're gonna go up to about 90 minutes. Now I know that seems like a lot, but this meat is pretty um, tough, so you wanna make sure it gets really tender. So we're gonna cook it for 90 minutes. All right, so once that is set and the timer is set, you can just walk away and we'll come back in about an hour and a half. All right, so once it's all done cooking, we're gonna turn the little knob to venting to let all of the steam and pressure out. Once the pressure's out, you can open up your lid. So good. So right now we're gonna add a cabbage. So I got a whole cabbage and literally just chopped it into four chunks. We're just gonna put this in here and then we're gonna close it up and cook it for a few more minutes. Now, if you don't like cabbage, you don't have to do this part. It will still taste amazing, but the cabbage is just a fun thing to add. And those that love it, it tastes good. All right, so you're gonna put your lid back on. Make sure your little knob is turned to ceiling. And then you're gonna push the pressure cooker manual button again. We're gonna go down to just three minutes. We just need to get that cabbage nice and cooked and it just only needs about three minutes to cook. Once the timer's done, you're gonna turn the knob again to venting, let all the steam out and even open up your lid. And your cabbage should be cooked just perfectly so it's nice and tender. But the thing that I want the most is the corned beef. So we're just gonna Carefully pull that out. Oh, this is falling apart. <laughs> All right, one, two, three. Nice, now if you could see this. We left a little bit of the fat on. You can take that off before you cook it, but I was just trying to go as quick and easy as I could, so I left my fat on and I'll just cut it off as I'm doing it. All right, I just wanna show you just how juicy and tender this is. We're just gonna cut it up. It just is falling apart. Oh my goodness. <laughs> All right, so if you've never had corned beef, I highly suggest giving it a try. So the first recipe that we're making today is our buffalo chicken wings. Now we've been getting a lot of requests yes. for either drumsticks or chicken wings. So we're just gonna show you how easy they are to make inside your Instant Pot. So, yes. all right, you wanna go first? Yes, okay, so the first thing you're gonna do is sprinkle them with all seasoned salt. You could also use salt and pepper if you don't have all season salt, but this gives it just a little more variety and a little more flavor. Okay, so once you season one side, flip them, and then you'll season the other. And you can do the same thing with the drumsticks, and you'll actually cook them for the same amount of time, yes. too. So. And these are great for 
games, appetizers right, coming right. up. Right, <laughs> Super Bowl is coming. My husband <laughs> loves these, so. And they're super quick and easy, and you don't have to slave away because the Instant Pot does all the work, so. Exactly. Okay, so I think I've got everything. Perfect. Pretty seasoned. Now we're gonna cook them inside of the Instant Pot, but we're gonna use like a steamer basket to yes. help us out a little bit. Now if you don't have a steamer basket, um, you can use like the little trivet that came with your Instant Pot, but I like steamer baskets easier because they just have a little handle. So. Yes. All right, wanna pass the water? Yep. So we're gonna Don't pour, pour right yeah, in. yeah. So we have like a cup of water. And we're okay. just dumping in because we need liquid, so it will pressurize. And then we'll put the basket right in. And then do you just want to put the chicken in? Yes. Hey, okay. this is super easy. Now I've lived out of state for a lot of years, and <laughs> this is my first year being home for the Super Bowl. And we are like, so glad. <laughs> the sisters, we let the boys watch the football game. Yes. And we just sit around all the food and, and just eat, eat the, duck. the whole entire game. <laughs> and, and then at halftime, we go in and we join them. And we watch the commercials. <laughs> and we're more there the half for the show. halftime show. We are. We are. And the food. But <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> all right. So we're going to put the lid on. Now, I get a lot of questions. If you're new to the Instant Pot, if you can hear that little jingle as it goes on, that means you did it right. So you just want to make sure your lid is on all the way. And after you put your lid on, you want to turn your knob right then so you won't forget. You're gonna turn it to ceiling. There are different kinds of instant pots. This one has a pressure cook button. There's also one with a manual button. So we're gonna push pressure cook and then it only cooks for about 10 minutes. So you push the little plus button to, to go up. So, yes. And then we'll wait for that to cook. So once your timer's done, we're gonna let it release on its own until oh, about 10 minutes or until the pressure is out. All right, once that little button goes down, you can go ahead and open up your pot. Ooh, they look good and they smell good. Yes, they do. All right, do you just want to pull them out? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so we're just, we washed the pan, we're going to put them back in, and then we're just going to add some buffalo sauce, but you could also do barbecue sauce, mm -hmm. teriyaki sauce. Right, whatever you like on your wings, yes. but we like hot sauce. Yes. <laughs> And I'm also all about the sauce. My husband likes the rubs, but I'm like, mm, give me sauce some of that sauce. Good. Okay. My kids like the barbecue, though, because they don't yes. like it being too hot. Too hot. But I'm a fan of all, all sauces. Mm. Okay, I'm just going to flip them over, nice. and then I'll sauce the other side. Fair. All right, just a little sauce, sauce on that guy. Nice. We're good? Good. All right. Okay. Should we stick them in the oven? Yep, and we're gonna broil them for about two minutes. Two minutes or so. Okay. So they're all done cooking, and then we're just gonna plate them on, and then we also have a little bit of ranch that you can dip them in as well. Now, if you want more sauce, you can actually take this sauce and like spread it mm -hmm. on a little bit, yeah. or you can just keep it just like this. Mix it around. So I actually have a video of teriyaki chicken that I've made before, but I put in my broccoli at the same time as everything else and it kind of disappeared. <laughs> and so I'm gonna show you how to make it quick and simple with putting in the broccoli in After. later. <laughs> and then also we're using jasmine rice instead of brown rice so you don't have to cook it nearly as long. So, okay, okay let's get cooking. So let's add our rice first. We okay. have like two cups, two cups of jasmine rice. You can use white rice too. Ooh. There we go. But I love jasmine rice. No, it is good. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Rice. Now with rice, when you cook it, you want like, so for every cup of rice, you have one and one fourth cup of liquid. liquid. So that way it won't stick to the bottom of your pot and it, you won't get that lovely burn notice. So if you get the burn notice a lot, go ahead, and add, go ahead and add just a little bit more chicken broth than what I told you to do. So right now we're adding two and, two and a half, half cups. We're gonna add just a little bit, just so we don't get the burn. Okay. Okay, and then our carrots, how much of these do we add? So we added like a cup of carrots. Sometimes I'll even just grab those little bags at the grocery mm -hmm. store that are just the little carrots and just shove them in because yeah. that's a little <laughs> less effort. <laughs> and then last thing, we have about two cups of chicken. So the chicken is already cooked, ready to go, yes. so we don't have to cook it for nearly as long. So it will make it go by a lot faster. If you have pre-cooked chicken, we love using like rotisserie chickens. Mm -hmm, we do. So it's all cooked, ready. All right. We're gonna put the lid on. And as soon as you put the lid on, you wanna make sure that this little knob is turned to ceiling, not venting. 
Now because we're cooking the rice, we're gonna cook it for seven minutes. So we're gonna push the pressure cook button or manual button and then just go down to seven minutes. Now as soon as you set the timer, you can go ahead and walk away. All right, we'll come back when this is done yes. cooking. <laughs> all right, so the chicken and rice, it's all done cooking. So we turned this little knob to venting, let all the steam yes. out as soon as the timer was done. So now we're gonna take the lid off. Ooh. And stir it all together. Stir it all around. That looks so good. There's no burning. There's Yes, we didn't get the burn. <laughs> so if you always get the burn, make sure to add a little bit more chicken broth so you don't have issues. Okay, and the carrots are soft too. So good, good. Perfect. Now, my secret tip to this. So while this was cooking, we went and steamed our broccoli yes. on the side so it wouldn't like disintegrate <laughs> pretty much in here. So we have just about a cup of broccoli all steamed ready to go. I also like okay. to get those ones, you can find them at like Walmart and you just, they come in a baggie and you oh, stick yeah. it in your microwave the and steam it. The, the steam freezer bags. section. Yes. Now you can add a little bit of salt and pepper if you want, but I think the teriyaki sauce kind of has enough salt in it yeah, that we're I just not going to add any in right now. So, okay. all right. Bowl it up. All right, time to put it in. I'm gonna bring it closer. Yes, so I, I will. Spill it up there. <laughs> That's <laughs> I don't know how good my aim is. Now I also just don't dump in the whole bottle of teriyaki because yes. some people like a lot, some people like a little. My kids don't like a ton, so we kind of just let them kind of choose, pick and choose how much teriyaki sauce they want. Okay, so this is one of my favorite teriyaki sauces. I like the little sesame seeds on top. You can get it without, but okay, I love okay. this sauce because of the seeds. So you an ingredient to buy. So I'll just add our teriyaki sauce on top. You can top this off with green onions or just leave it as is. And Today I'm making Instant Pot Pot Roast. So I'm starting with a two pound pot roast. The good thing about the Instant Pot is that you can use a cheaper cut of meat and it will still taste delicious. I always like to cook the meat on the very bottom of my Instant Pot because that's where it's hottest and that's where it will cook the fastest. Next you're going to add just a half of a packet of the Lipton Onion Soup Mix and just pour that right on top of your meat. Now I've pre-sliced some onions. I like them so they're a little bit bigger chunks. You can chop them up too if you want to, but adding the onion to the pot roast is one of my favorites. Next I'm going to add my carrots. Now I have gotten bigger carrots here. I peeled them and then I chopped them into bigger chunks. Just because it will be cooking for a long time, you kind of want big chunks of carrots. Next I'm just going to throw in some potatoes. I had some leftover red ones and then I also am going to fill it with just some small ones. Now you can use whatever kind of potatoes you like. Just know they will be cooked all the way through. Then you're going to add the other half of your Lipton onion soup mix on top of your potatoes. Then lastly, you're going to add two cups of beef broth right on top of everything. Then go ahead and put your lid on, make sure that it's sealed all the way, and you're going to turn that little knob to sealing, not venting, because sealing means you want to cook it. Now we are going to push the meat stew button, and we're going to go all the way up to 60 minutes. Now I let the pot roast release on its own, so I didn't push venting until I was ready to open it just to make sure. But look how good this looks. Then I just took my meat out and I shredded it, put my potatoes and carrots on the sides. It's the perfect meal for like a Sunday dinner. All right guys, so if you love these recipes, you can find more Instant Pot dinner recipes just right up there. And I will see you guys next week. Bye.